Welcome back to another Professional Picks betting video. Throughout week five of the season, we've been doing pretty well, building up that bankroll slowly, so looking to keep that rolling in week six. Taking a look at week five bets, ironically, the only one that did not hit was the lock, that teaser. Ultimately, that wasn't my favorite teaser. That's why I only put one unit on it. Nonetheless, the lock did not hit. Luckily, the rest of the bets made up for that as the guys pulled through all around which brings us to up eight and a half units through week five. Like I said, looking to build upon that in week six. As always, show us some love if you're using this video to help inform your bets. Like it, let us know in the comment section what you're betting, if you're tailing, and subscribe to keep getting this content as well as our other NFL content week in and week out. That brings us to the first slate of the betting card in week six, and that is the Washington Commanders coming off a long week and a tough loss against the Bears on Thursday night, heading to Atlanta, where the Falcons just beat a Texans team that looked pretty good so far this season, certainly better than what people had expected out of them. Quick notes from last week, what I saw uh, with the Commanders, you know, it was a short week coming off an overtime loss against the Eagles. Uh, overtime loss games or overtime games on Sunday heading into a short week on Thursday. Opponents have a, have an historically low win percentage. So I was not too surprised to see the Bears win the game, but it was surprised to see it in such a blowout fashion. The key takeaway for the game for me was after they were down in the second half, uh, how good Sam Howell looked at quarterback for the Commanders albeit against a trash Bears defense, but he was able to throw the ball pretty effectively in the second half and really get some yards which will be handy if they do, you know, get down in this game against the Falcons team like they did last week. But coming off a long week here, you should see a more improved and more fresh Commanders team coming ready to play again after that tough loss. For the Falcons, they did win and they did compete. You saw some positive steps from quarterback Desmond Ritter as he was able to get more passing yards under his belt and more air yards per throw. It's also encouraging to see their stud tight end or potential stud tight end Kyle Pitts get more in the action there as well. Of course, rookie running back B. John Robinson has been as advertised and has been great all season long. Using pro football focus as I do in most of my videos, you, know, you can see that the Falcons are the 13th highest ranked team overall in the NFL, and then the commanders here are 21st. So a little bit of spread there, but this, this spread at two and a half with the Falcons being home implies a pretty straight up game here on a neutral site with you know one and a half to two and a half points being attributed to home field here. So this game is really a coin flip. It's played anywhere, but it's played in Atlanta, which is why they're favored. You also see a low total here. Given that it's going to be a pretty close game with a low total, I really like the Commanders plus two and a half here. Again, they're coming off a long week too, a little bit of extra time to prepare for this Falcons team. Also a little time to get fresh after some, some two long games against the Bears and the Eagles. You know, teasing this number makes a lot of sense because you get past the key number of three and get past the key number of seven. With field, with losing by a field goal or losing by a touchdown, either of those scenarios can happen and are very common, and that would still allow the commanders to win this bet in the teaser. Again, also it makes it even better that it's a low total. That means less variation in scoring, less potential outcomes, and you know higher likelihood that this spread, this teaser will cover. Last point I wanna make, I mentioned Sam Hollow and his ability to throw the ball in the second half against the Bears. If this game were to get away from the commanders in the first half, like it did to them last week, then I think with his ability to throw the ball downfield and you know create big chunk plays, that they could still do a backdoor cover with this teaser as well. Moving on to the Seahawks and the Bengals here. This game is really intriguing to me because the Bengals are coming off a must win game against the Cardinals and kind of find themselves in another must win game, especially against a team like the Seahawks that his you know, it's played pretty well so far this season at 3-1, and one, coming off a bye here. Last time we saw the Seahawks play, they did incredibly well against the Giants on Monday Night Football. Shout out to our guy, uh, Devin Witherspoon, at cornerback. And um, so looking at this game here, I would have expected to see the total a little bit higher given the passing ability of both these teams and the weapons that wide receivers that they both have. But given the Bengals' struggles, I think that's why the total isn't higher than it normally would be. Thinking about this one, again, I think it's kind of a must-win game for the Bengals here is you can't start out the season at 2-4, and four, especially in a competitive division that they have, especially with surprising wins the Steelers have been putting up. It truly is anyone's division, and they don't want to be found at the bottom of that. For the Seahawks, surprising probably to most people, they start out the season 3-1, and one, looking very solid, coming off a bye. 
and always more dangerous off a of bye, especially with a good prepared head coach and veteran head coach in Pete Carroll. So I can't decide whether this minus two and a half is a trap game for the Bengals or not. So I'm avoiding the spread altogether, and I'm going to take the over in this game at 44 and a half. I really like this because it's a bet on Joe Burrow and the Bengals and, you know, having to win this game and competing this division and the way they've competed in games thus far this season is by throwing the ball downfield like you saw Jamar Chase do against the uh, Cardinals last week. On top of that, I love the receiving trio that the Seahawks have. They haven't utilized Jackson Smith and Jay Bud a ton this year, but DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett are still very dangerous weapons there. Even Kenneth Walker in, in, at the running back, he's not the best pass catcher. and They don't utilize him in that sense all that much, but he's able to rip off big chunk plays to help him this over. Finally, and really the key kick, ticking point for me is that both these secondaries are ranked bottom five in the league, bottom ten in the league. I'm sorry, in Pro Football Focus grade. I think that the Bengals are worse, granted, in the secondary, but I think that almost helps this over more because if the Bengals get down even early. And by a, a marginal amount, that's going to force their hand to throw the ball more and more and push up this total. So I'm really liking this 44 and a half here in this game. And what should be a great game all around. And one, whether or not you bet in it, you probably don't want to watch. Moving on to a game that I will be attending. We got the Bears hosting the Vikings here. What is most interesting to me is that this over started at like 47, 46. But the weather in Chicago has been so bad this week, and the wind especially, it is continually forcing this um, line lower and lower, which is what really forced me, forced my hand to take the Bears plus three here. Everyone knows that for the Vikings side, Justin Jefferson out this game on IR, at the very least out for four weeks, likely longer than that, given the Vikings' performance. On top of that, there's been a lot of talk in the rumor mill about trading Kirk Cousins away. Uh, that can't be good for, you know, team morale. And at the very least, it's a distraction for this team. The Bears, however, coming off a long week, like the Commanders, got to like that. Uh, more time to prepare for this team. And even more so than that, Justin Fields has been looking very solid the last two weeks, throwing the ball downfield, uh, utilizing DJ Moore a lot, and the guy they got in this offseason in that offense, Cole Komet, getting more integrated in, in the offense, especially in the red zone. So liking the way Justin Fields is looking, you know, Vikings trending downward, and with this weather trending downward, I think it's going to be a close game. It hurts me not to pick the Bears' money line because I do think they're going to win this game, but I think plus three is a great line here in a game where the Bears have more momentum going for them than the Vikings. Vikings on the way down, Bears on the way up. Weather, probably win going affected, so kicking is going to be a lot more difficult. Passing is going to be a lot more difficult. I think uh, with everything going on, it's it suits the Bears to be in a close game. I think plus three is a good spot to be in. Another game I can't wait to watch um, for different reasons here, but similar to the Bengals game, Cardinals heading to L.A. where division rivals Rams are hosting them. Seven-point favorite. I know this line started at L.A. minus six, maybe minus six and a half on some books. So the public's been jumping on them, pushing that total or that spread to minus seven. But I will be on the total this game. This is two teams, especially the Rams, that know how to throw the ball downfield and get the offense moving. The Cardinals have kind of had to do that by necessity this year with their defense playing so poorly and playing from behind so often. But I mentioned that, that I like that over in the Bengals Seahawks game because those are two bottom five, bottom ten secondaries in coverage defenses. These are two bottom three coverage defenses. Cardinals being third to worst in the league and the Rams being second to last in the league in coverage grade. So just given that fact, you've got to love the Rams and Cooper Cup, Tutu Atwell, and Puka Nakua to slice up this defense. Matt Stafford to be throwing deep bombs all day to these guys. Uh, such an elusive trio of wide receivers that Sean McVay has really learned how to weaponize quickly. Given that fact that you think the Rams, I think the Rams are going to put up points early, push the ball downfield. Again, that's going to force the Cardinals' hand to uh, throw that ball as much as they can downfield and try to keep himself in the game. The one bright spot for the Cardinals this year has been their run game, led by James Conner, but I believe that he is out this week, and so it, it, he is. So without their best running back that's leading their run game with a terrible defense that has caused the Cardinals to play from behind all season long, facing a really potent Rams passing attack, I like the Rams to get up in this game early. I like the Rams to keep the foot on the gas pedal, not letting an divisional opponent get any leverage on them. And I like the Cardinals to play from behind, push the ball downfield as well, try to keep pace with the Rams, 
And regardless of who wins this game or who covers, I really like the over in this one. Couple more games. Next game, want to talk about Eagles at Jets here. Another low total, 41. Eagles 5 0, as they are the only team outside of the 49ers to uh, claim that record. Jets here coming off a, I would say, a very lucky win, um, but definitely a revenge game win for Nathaniel Hackett in Denver last week. And plus seven here, so the Eagles are, even on the road, vastly favored in this game. It's worth noting that Eagles are the sixth, despite their 5 0 record, sixth best ranked team overall in PFF. And the Jets, despite the 2 and 3 record, are the 11th best team. And I don't, that, Supports my argument, but even the eyeball test here, I really like the Jets plus seven, and I'm going to tease that even more because I love that with this low total. Jets plus seven here, I think it's going to hold no matter what, but a Jets 13 looks even juicier here. I love the way the Jets have been looking lately. Two two weeks ago on Monday night, maybe Sunday night, they uh, held the Chiefs to, I think, only 23 total points. They got that... They got the loss, but it was a morale win. Only lost by three points there. Then they got the win against the Broncos. They're trending in the right direction. I think plus seven is a little bit too much for my liking here. Or minus seven is too much for my liking for the Eagles. And again, tease with the low total. This looks money. Eagles defense has not looked nearly as good as it was last year. They were ranked number one all season long last year. And despite many departures, they're ranked uh, the 14th best defense overall in pro football focus grade. I think that's very telling. Um, you know, I said not the biggest strength in this team anymore. The Jets can take advantage of that. On the flip side, the Jets do have one of the strongest defenses in the NFL, led by a lot of guys like CJ Mosley at linebacker and Sauce Garner at corner. I think that uh, Jets defense, as this total would imply, can suppress the Eagles offense enough to keep them in the game. And then Brees Hall, Zach Wilson, picking up, and uh, Garrett Wilson as well, you know, picking up momentum after a close loss against the Chiefs and a nice win against the Broncos. I think they keep this one close. Certainly 13 and a half close, but I bet even seven as well. Loving this game here. And in the teaser, of course. And then the real game that I can't wait, wait to watch this week is the Cowboys off a horrendous loss to the 49ers, taking on the Chargers, coming off a bye. As they say, it all comes down to Monday night, and this is what the card is going to live and die off of. Uh, large overrunner total here, 15 and a half. Obviously, we know the capabilities that the Chargers offense has moved the ball downfield. But despite what you saw against the 49ers, the Cowboys still got a lot of firepower on offense, too. Still a top 10 offensive line in the league. That hasn't changed throughout the last decade. they got great talent, wide receiver in CeeDee Lamb, and a pretty underrated threat with Ferguson at tight end. Pollard at running back is solid, running behind again is solid, both run blocking and pass blocking O line. It all comes down to Dak Prescott and his ability to not turn the ball over, as you've seen so many times in his career. Chargers, both the last two games they played have both been lucky lucky wins in my opinion they've gone for it in their own deep in their own territory late in the fourth quarter on fourth down twice they didn't get it twice and somehow they still managed to win the game against the vikings and managed to squeak out one against the raiders well it's not going to happen this time i don't even think this game is going to be close i absolutely love the cowboys in this game i'm not ready to write them off after one bad loss to like, two bad losses but one really bad loss against the 49ers and a tough loss against the Cardinals too. But so much of the eyeball test is showing me that this defense is for real. This offense can come into play, especially when they're playing its poor defenses like the Chargers have. The Chargers defense in, in the NFL is ranked the fifth worst overall grade. And then Derwin James, I believe he's out. He's at least out last week. We'll see if he plays this week. Key piece in that secondary and really all over in that defense, the way he plays. Might not be playing Cowboys take advantage of that. Cowboys are going to win this game easily. I have it on minus two here. I think that's going to cover. But just because there's some crazies going for two, going for four down with these Chargers, I'm taking just the money line here. But I absolutely love the Cowboys to win. This is a classic case of solid offense is going up against a really good offense against good defense. I'm picking the good defense every time. And this defense isn't just good. It is great. I don't care what I saw against the 49ers. They're going to come out this next week with a vengeance, and they're going to tear up this Chargers team. So 
Feeling pretty confident about that one, obviously. That's the lock here, two units of the money line. Um, looking to build onto this eight and a half unit bankroll so far. Like the over in the Seattle Bengals game. Again, two bottom 10 secondaries. You know, same exact sentiment and rhetoric for that Rams Cardinals game. Two horrendous secondaries, two pretty good passing attacks, and one great coach in the Rams. I like the over there. Bears plus three, a little bit of a. You know, a hard play here, especially going to the game. But I think because of that weather, without Justin Jefferson and a true wide receiver one in this Vikings team, along with, you know, maybe some wind trouble kicking, I think this lends itself to being a close game. Give me the home dogs here. And then finally, I think a great teaser that everyone should, at the very least, consider. Jets plus 13. I would be absolutely shocked if that one doesn't hit. The one that's more iffy here is the Commanders plus 8.5. But to me, that's a great tease because, again, going through the three-point marks if they lose by a field goal and going through the seven-point mark if they lose by a touchdown covers your butt there. Coming off a long week and Sam Howell looking better and better in the passing game each week, I think at the very least they can cover eight and a half. You know, worst case, the Falcons get up to 14 in the fourth quarter and the Commanders have a backdoor cover here. But the Falcons have shown that they haven't been able to put up too many points this season, so I would expect this one to be closer than normal. And, again, I don't think the Falcons, with the ability to put up points, get out larger to a two-touchdown lead, opening the door for a backdoor cover. I'm loving both these lines in the teaser here and really hoping and believing that I will add to this card in Week 6. That's the bet for Week 6. I'm feeling pretty confident about this one. Hope you tell at least some of these bets at the very minimum. I hope this informed you for some of your other wagers and predictions. But best of luck in Week 6, guys.